Fusion Mobile Quality e-learning experience on the go An electoral system may be defined as a process or method through which the people of a given country elect those that represent them in politics into different political offices or positions in government. It also includes the conditions and process for the nomination of candidates for elective posts including procedure and rules of election. In Nigeria today, we have the Independent National Electoral Commission, which is INEC, to be the electoral body of Nigeria. And this came up as a result of the 1999 constitution, which we use today. So INEC is Nigeria's electoral body and also constitutes our electoral system. What are the features of an electoral system? Feature number one, it is an independent body and uh, should be impartial. So for every nation to have an electoral system, they must make sure that it must be an independent and impartial electoral body that we put in place. Number two, constant stroke periodic elections. There should be regular or periodic elections as provided in the constitution as this will help to eliminate any president or leader who intends to perpetuate himself in power. Number three, constituencies. It is important for this to come up in a country to ensure the delimitation of the country into areas or groups from where people will come to represent others in politics. Number four, we have universal adult suffrage. Qualified adults should exercise their rights of voting during elections. Number five, voting should be conducted. This should be done without fear of molestation, intimidation, and uh, victimization. Number six, every interest group in the society should be represented in the legislature. That is to say, that the legislature must comprise of all interest groups in the state so as to ensure that no parts or no area is marginalized in politics. Number seven, there should be periodic public display of voters' lists and regular review of voters' register. Number eight, the judiciary should be independent and impartial and should be capable of handling election cases and petitions which is brought to it for consideration. These and many others constitute the characteristics of an electoral body or electoral system. We have the next one to be types of electoral system. We have the first type to be the single member constituency and single vote. That's the first. And this means, or this system is usually referred to as first past the post, in quotes, or the simple majority system. Here, a candidate has the highest number of votes cast to win the election. Britain, USA, Canada, Nigeria are examples of states that practice the single member constituency and single vote system of election. 
Number two, we have single member and second ballot. Here, the failure of any candidate to receive absolute majority at the first ballot warrants for a second one to be held with the weaker candidates either choosing or being required to retire. Example of a state where this happens is in France. C or the third one we have single member with preferential votes. This system allows the electorate to place the candidates in order of preference. The votes of the weaker candidates being distributed to the stronger ones according to second third etc. Number four we have proportional representation. The essence of this is to allocate seats in proportion to the votes cast in multi-member constituencies. This is a method used to elect people into the legislature. The total number of votes which a party scores is calculated in proportion to the total number of votes cast. There are two types of proportional presentation they include the following i will have the list system here the electorate votes for a list of candidates presented by a political party and each party wins the number of seats in that constituency according to the vote cast for that party list i i single transferable vote in this one, all the candidates in a multi-member constituencies are marked in order of preference by the voters. After counting the votes, an electoral quota is established. That is, or which means, the minimum number of votes needed by a candidate to win one of the seats. The surplus votes are now redistributed to other candidates according to the voters' order of preference. The weakest candidates are then eliminated and their votes are redistributed according to the voters' second, third ETC preferences. This is what happens in the single transferable votes, which is one of the type of proportional representation. Would I go? So the number five, we have the plurality system. Here, the candidate who scores the highest number of votes is deemed elected. It is based on single member constituency, which means that a candidate has to obtain a simple majority of votes to be elected. It is also referred to as first past the post in quotes. Number six, we have the second ballot system. This system involves two ballots. At the first instance, the successful candidate is required to obtain an absolute majority of the votes cast. That is 50% plus one. If this was not obtained by any of the candidates, a second ballot is required and those having unacceptably low results would be eliminated. The winning candidate is then required to obtain a simple majority. The seventh one, we have the alternative system. In this system, each voter is given the permission to indicate his choice of candidates in order of preference, that is to say first, second and third. If there is no absolute majority, the candidate who score lists can be dropped and his vote distributed to other candidates according to the second preference of the voter. This constitutes the types
of electoral system which we have in government. The next discourse on this electoral system is what we call the electoral constituency. An electoral constituency is defined as an electoral district or an area from which one or more members or representatives are elected into political offices. The division of a country into constituencies is referred to as delimitation and it makes for equitability in the allocation of parliamentary seats. Types of constituencies. We have number one, the single member constituency. This requires the election of only one member into the legislature. This system is done in every election. Every voter is only entitled to one vote. Nigeria is an example of a state which adopts this method. Number two, we have the multi-member constituency. Here, it demands the election of two or more members of the legislature in every election. In this system, a voter may be entitled to two or even more votes. However, it is worthy to note that the number of votes of an electorate depends on the number of candidates to be elected from the constituency. This system agrees with provisions for minority representation and encourages the multiplication of groups in the legislature, making it difficult for any group to command a majority. Having looked into this, we will now go to the next topic, which is on elections. Every day in our lives, we hear about elections. Elections are defined as the act of electing candidates to represent the people of a given country in the parliament, the executive, and possibly into other arms of government as provided in the constitution of that particular country. By parliament here we mean the legislature. So when people are elected to represent their people in different political positions, we we'll say that elections have been conducted. What are the functions of elections? Number one, elections makes it easier for the people to remove a bad government from office, which is to say that it encourages change of government. Number two, it gives elected representatives the legitimate right to rule. Since these persons are elected by the electorate, it gives them acceptance, it gives them support of the people to rule them as leaders. Number three, it gives the people the opportunity to make free choice of electing their leaders into different political offices. Since one will come to the voting point and cast his vote for someone who he thinks is the best, so it allows for free choice as no one is compelled to vote against his conscience. Number four, election provides the means of ensuring control and accountability of those who have been elected. Number five, it creates the avenue for people to participate in the decision making of their country. Thus, 
it fosters democracy. Number six, it helps in educating the electorate as they receive citizenship education are all, and are also educated about their political rights. Number seven, elections confers legitimacy on the elected government in power. These are some of the functions of election. We now go to types of elections. We have the first type of election to be direct election. This involves the electorates casting their votes directly in an election for candidates of their choice that will represent them either in the executive or legislature without any interference. This is the first type of election. Number two, we have indirect election. This has to do with a system whereby the legislators or local government units will form the body known as electoral college. They will have to vote for the candidates of their choice on behalf of the citizens. As a result of the failure of the general election to produce elected candidates. However, the Americans elect their presidential candidates through electoral college. The third one, we have what we call by-elections. The by-election is an election which takes place to fill a vacant elective post as a result of disqualification, resignation, or death of the individual holding that office. The election takes place in that constituency where there has been a vacancy. Therefore, note and understand that only the registered voters in the constituency are allowed to vote. Number four, we have runoff election or what we call second ballot. This happens when none of the candidates wins the election by absolute majority in the general election. Another election will be conducted and in this final election only the candidates with the highest votes are allowed to contest. Number five, we have primary election. This involves the political parties presenting candidates for an election in a country. It is conducted within a political party to choose credible candidates that can adequately to represent the to give the voters the freedom the party in an election to vote for as they compete with people parties. of their choice. The principle of one man, one vote we have referendum must be respected. To ensure this is a, free a yes election. or no vote Number four, of the people, voters particularly on law in a given political system. It ensures that laws they should which be are allowed in conformity with the popular will of the people exercise their franchise. Are not passed. It Number serves five, as a useful check on the powers. Electoral officers of the legislature should be impartial. This and many others have that seen. They should not collaborate either the with the government election or any political party. We now go to As the next discourse, jeopardizes which is on free and, and fair, fair election. election. Number six, independence by the word of the electoral free. commission and fair should be guaranteed. That is to we say that government should not interfere. That this means the conduct of the election. Something which is done. Number seven, without. Counting of votes, marginalizing any must sect be done. People under strict supervision. That means it is obvious and to avoid rigging of elections. There we are no and the results must be declared immediately after count. My practice this and many others attend constitutes the conditions so by that 
necessary we will define free and fair election conduct of a free, free and fair election an election and even today which is conducted we see this happen according to the principle every four four years and rules elections of are democracy. being conducted what are the conditions and then and having for learned the this today free and fair election we as students the first condition is here that this time the country must be divided into constituencies to ourselves based on population if elections in the country regards to Nigeria the number of people to needed to constitute have been done free and fair because we usually see two, them happen only four qualified four years. citizens because a change of government registered must be done and allowed to and vote. for it to be a dos elections must come come register should be prepared where people who goes to the polls number three candidates voting should be done secretly of their choice so as we go to give the voters the freedom what we call electoral to vote commission for people of their choice electoral commission the principle of one man body. one vote must be responsible for organizing a free and, and conducting election. elections number four in a political system voters should not be intimidated at the polls they should be allowed to freely exercise their franchise number five electoral officers should be impartial which means that they should not collaborate either with the government or any political party as this jeopardizes free and fair voting number six independence of the electoral commission should be guaranteed that is to say that government should not interfere with the conduct of the elections number seven counting of votes must be done under strict supervision to avoid rigging of elections and the results must be declared immediately after count this and many others constitutes the conditions necessary for the conduct of a free and fair election and even today we see this happen in nigeria every four four years elections have been conducted and then having learned this today we as students learning here this time can attest to ourselves if elections in the country of Nigeria where we belong to have been done free and fair because we usually see them happen every four four years because a change of government must be done and for it to be done elections must come up where people who goes to the polls to elect candidates of their choice we go to what we call electoral commission electoral commission is a body responsible for organizing and conducting elections in a political system it can also be seen as an independent and impartial body responsible for conducting and organizing all elections in a given country it has a chairman as the head and other members of the commission using nigeria as a case study nigeria's electoral commission is the independent national electoral commission which is headed by professor atahiru jaga What are the features of an electoral system? The first feature is that it is a body responsible for organizing and conducting all elections in a political system. So for a body to be called an electoral commission, it must be one that conducts and organizes elections in that given state number two the commission is responsible for the conduct of free 
and fair elections in a state. Number three, the commission also has the sole power of announcing election results. Number four, the commission also is an independent and impartial body. The fifth feature is that the commission must be controlled by the chairman who heads the commission while other members are appointed. Number six, the members of this commission have a fixed tenure of office. Their work does not last for eternity. Their work is not unlimited. It has a fixed time after which they will leave for a new body to be formed. Number seven. There are resident commissioners for each state of the federation. These and many others constitute the features or characteristics of an electoral commission. What are the functions of, ele of an electoral commission? Having seen the features, can anybody amongst you tell us one of the functions of an electoral commission? Now let's go to the functions of electoral commission. Number one, it registers political parties according to laid down rules and regulations. Number two, the Electoral Commission has the sole power to organize and conduct free and fair elections in a country. Number three, eligible voters are registered by the Commission. Number four, the body provides all the necessary materials needed for the election. For example, the ballot boxes, ballot papers, pulling boots, the cubicle, etc. They are all provided by the Electoral Commission. Number six, the Electoral Commission also appoints and trains electoral officers. For instance, or for example, the presiding clerks, the presiding officers, the assistant presiding officers, supervisors, they are all trained and appointed by the electoral commission. Number six, the commission is res responsible for the counting of votes and releasing the results of each election conducted. Number seven, the commission also gives financial grants to political parties to help them organize themselves and to help them sponsor their candidates who represent them under the party platform. So these and many others constitute what we have as the functions of an electoral commission. Thus, we have come to the end of our discussion on elections and electoral system.